And this video is for all of you who get confused between STNR and ATNR the way that I did when I was studying. I realized that I complicated these reflexes way more than I should have because of the way that the material was presented to me. So I wanted to go over these two to help you clarify what exactly these primitive reflexes are and what they do. So let's go ahead and start with what are primitive reflexes. Primitive reflexes is a fancy way of saying a natural reaction or a stereotypical response of the nervous system during infant development that supports a natural motor reaction or behavior. So each reflex serves a specific function during development and after a while our primitive reflexes integrate or go away as our nervous system and the frontal lobe of our brain develops. So the two primitive reflexes we're talking about today along with many others all go away within 6 months to 12 months of age. So now that we have a general understanding of what a primitive reflex is, I want to go ahead and start Start with what is a TNR. So a TNR, also known as the asymmetrical tonic neck reflex or the fencer's pose, is a reflex that we have during utero. So that means when the mom is pregnant with the baby, the purpose of ATNR is to help the baby twist and turn in order to navigate out of the birth canal. So this is going to make sense when you see how the position of this baby is to have their head turn and when their head turns their arm extends as long as well as their leg so this is going to help them twist and turn to navigate out of the birth canal atnr usually integrates by six months of age so if you have a child after six months who exhibits atnr then that means that reflex did not integrate properly which can cause other developmental delays and difficulties. ATNR really helps with hand-eye coordination. A child with a non-integrated ATNR is going to have difficulty with hand-eye coordination. So you want to think about how your eyes track things, which means that they're going to have difficulty with reading, writing, that's going to impact handwriting. And you're also going to think about the fluidity of motor movements when we are doing something with our arm, shoulders, and neck. So an activity like riding a bike or other activities like crawling with a cross pattern movement. So the way that we test this reflex is by having the child lay on their back, just like in this picture, and you're going to go ahead and turn their head to the right all the way and turn their head to the left. And as you do that a couple of times, if you see this fencer pose reaction where their arm or their leg extends in the direction that their head is turned, then this reflex is active. I like to do it in crawling position if they're old enough to be in that stance. And I do the same thing where I have them on their hands and knees. I tell them, can you act like a puppy if they're older? And then I turn their head to the right and to the left slowly. And I look for a reaction in their arm or their leg. So with their arm, a lot of times you'll see the arm try to bend. And here's a good picture to show you. And this is how you know that it's not integrated. Another way you can look at it is if you have the child standing, you have them flex their shoulders straight up in front of them at 90 degrees and if they're not perfectly straight and one is kind of bent inward then ATNR is likely active. So now we can move on to STNR which is the symmetrical tonic neck, re neck reflex. So this is also present at birth but it disappears later than ATNR around six to nine months of age and there is a very clear reason why it disappears at that age. This reflex helps us learn how to crawl as a baby. So as we're starting to weight bear on our hands and our knees, this reflex is going to help us 
hold our bodies up while we are still learning how to control our heads with gravity. So if we bring our head up, what's going to happen is this reflex is going to say, hey, we're going to sit your bottom down on your heels to help you hold yourself up. So that is what STNR is doing and it will integrate close to 11 months of age. Now we learn how to crawl from six to 10 months of age. So that timeline matches up perfectly in order to help us exit out of no longer needing the STNR. So when babies are learning to rock back and forth on their hands and their knees, as if you have experience being around babies, they do that while they start to learn how to crawl. And when they do that, they eventually figure out, hey, I can bilaterally coordinate my arms and my legs and start to move forward in a successful crawl. And then STNR will integrate and no longer be needed. Now that we know this, it makes sense that if you have a retained STNR, you're going to have difficulties with posture when you're standing or in crawling. A lot of children who have retained STNR actually skip crawling altogether. They might have shown a similar pattern of movement, but more of a hop rather than a bilateral coordinated movement of their arms and legs back and forth. So that means they're also going to have difficulty with overall strength and muscle tone. And you might see frequent W sitting where they sit on their legs bent kind of backward in the shape of a W. And this is also going to impact their hand-eye coordination. The crawling milestone is very important for babies with their visual development because they learn how to not only track and kind of respond to their bodies moving across the floor, but they're visually having to scan for what is close and what is far. So children who skip crawling tend to also have a lot more vision-based difficulties. An easy way to test for STNR is to have the child go on all fours and ask them to bring their head up and down. If they have difficulty, you can manually move their head for them and do this a couple of times to see if there is a reaction in their arms, back, and their bottom. So if their back is really twitchy and they're having a hard time holding this creeping position up, their arms are bending, or perhaps they can't hold their weight up and they shift their weight back into a seated position with their bottom against their heels, then that means that this reflex is likely still active. I hope this video was helpful in differentiating ATNR and STNR and most importantly understanding why we have primitive reflexes and why they go away. I think once you know what purpose they serve and why they go away, it makes a lot more sense as to what happens if they are retained. So I hope this helps. Good luck with your studies and I will catch you guys next time. Take care.